Most certainly, there is something about stillness. In the presence of God, stillness has a purpose. Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I believe that this verse is calling us to be still in the presence of our Lord because when you are still in God's presence, you show humility and you become open to God. That means you're ready to listen to his voice. This scripture is also teaching us a kingdom protocol, how to behave in the presence of a holy God. Remember, he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is saying to us being still is an expected attitude or protocol in the presence of God. The silence or stillness is a sign of deep respect and awe in the presence of God. The stillness means you're giving him all of your attention and that you are focused on the Lord. And if you think about it carefully, when the Bible says, be still and know that I am God, it's really telling you to stop everything you are doing. Stop doubting, stop worrying, stop overthinking, stop fighting, stop resisting, and just start yielding and listen to what God speaks. It's not hard, it's easy. In Matthew 11, 29 to 30, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, his yoke is easy. Just start listening to God. Getting to know God starts with listening to what he has to say. Do you hear the Spirit of God speaking when you pray? Are you listening to what God is saying? When you spend time getting to know the Lord, you will truly be transformed. I really urge you to desire and hunger for an encounter in the presence of God, because it's only in those one-to-one -one intimate moments of encounter that each of us really get a personal revelation of who God truly is. It's in those encounters that we are empowered and filled with courage to walk in faith the courage and faith to face the world around us. It becomes more easier to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. A revelation of God or an encounter with God usually ignites something very special in us. Let us reflect on a revelation Isaiah received from God that should truly inspire you. Listen carefully to what Isaiah 45 verse 2 to 7 says. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name and the God of Israel, Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you. Though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is a wonderful revelation of God. It reminds us that God is in full control of everything. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. God is almighty. We see in Isaiah 45, verse 22 to 23, says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That to me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. We should realize that in those moments where we are still before God, we realize that God is even more than we thought. We realize just how mighty and powerful God is. The Bible teaches us that there is no one and nothing that can be compared to God. Nobody and nothing are worthy of competing with God for the most important place in your heart. God should always come first. I must remind you that God is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. Now let's bow down and pray. Wherever you are, no matter what situation you're in, let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we worship you because you are the God 
who can solve difficult problems. You are the God who can overcome obstacles that seem impossible, and you truly deserve all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Lord, your word says in Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Today we return to you, Lord most merciful. We ask that you forgive us from all our sins. We submit our hearts, our minds, our will, and our emotions to you. We are looking to you, gracious Lord. Transform our lives to be an agent of change, to bring glory and honor to your name. Save our souls from the perils of sin. We are looking to you, Lord, as our Redeemer and Savior. Help us to be still and know that you alone are God. Help us to be convicted and committed to spending time to know you. Fill us with wisdom to understand your word. Let it be a daily desire that we seek to spend time alone in your presence. Help us to keep our relationship with Jesus Christ as priority in our lives, pulling us in the direction of righteousness and truth. Help us to set our eyes and affections on the things of God. When we are weak, strengthen us through your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. King Jesus, I pray that we may learn to exercise wisdom in ways we have never before. I pray that we may begin to grow spiritually. I pray for a true revival in the lives of believers. I pray that we begin to grow in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of your word. Help us to grow as believers that we may become spiritually mature. Help us to grow each day as we meditate upon the living word of God. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I pray that you help us to mount up King Jesus. We trust in you. We are confident that you are faithful. We thank you, God, for renewal and strength. In Lamentations 3, verse 25, your word says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. I pray that even from this day forward, that you will grant us the will and endurance to be patient and true. I will wait on you, Lord Jesus. My heart is open to you. I pray that your Holy Spirit will create a fire in us that burns brightly for the things of God, a fire of truth that burns for Jesus Christ. Be exalted, mighty God. Accept my prayer through your grace and mercy. Let it be even so, Lord God. I thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. Let it be even so, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If this message was a blessing to you, type Amen in the comment section. Be blessed today in Jesus' name.